Okay, so people have asked us, um, they've seen our black light set up back here, and they've asked us what's going on there, how did you build it, uh, what, what is your black light set up like for collecting insects? So I thought we would just go through the details of how we built this guy back here, and so if that's something you're interested in, you can like and subscribe, and you'll get notifications when we make more videos like this. So this is our black light setup that we've made at home, right? Mm -hmm. So why did you decide to construct something like this? Well, I like to run a mercury vapor light uh, pretty much every night where at least the weather is, is um, uh, amenable to it uh, to see what kinds of insects come in. And previously we had it on our porch itself, but um, you appropriately so were interested in using the porch for a porch. <laughs> and so we moved the black light off, um, which is good too, because it's closer to the woods now. Well, to be fair, we, ha we hung hooks for the hammocks and then instantly the black light got attached to it. And then I was never able to ha hang the hammocks, right? <laughs> I, I, ha I have no defense, that. that is correct. <laughs> So it's super simple. I just um, took a couple of uh, treated 4x4s, sunk them in the ground on either side, and then just with 2x4s um, framed it and put a metal roof on the top um, so just at a slight angle to, so water can run off. So will you point to the 2x4s to folks so they can see? 2x4s, 2x4. This is the 4x4 four four that's actually into the ground with concrete. And the actual um, backing to this is... Well, before we talk about that, let's talk about what is the roof? What did we do to the roof? The roof is just a piece of treated plywood with uh, the scavenized metal roofing uh, on top. Yeah. And again, at a slight angle so that water can run off. And that just protects the, the light from, from uh, uh, and insects from uh, rain. And so the actual sheet, what people normally have as a sheet is? Yeah, so this is some stuff I found at Lowe's that's some kind of bathroom. Uh, it's like a shower, plastic shower liner thing that they would use for yeah. a cheap like shower wall redo we'll put a, the link in there i can find it we can put the link in there it's plastic but it's not super smooth it's got texture to it and that allows mm -hmm. the insects to easily grab a hold you can texture still see there. some moths from the night before easily hang on to it um, so this comes in four by eight foot sheets i've just got two of them i have this about six foot tall uh, so i just have them slightly overlapped um, and i uh, just uh, riveted them uh, in the middle to keep them close together and then just used wood screws uh, on the edges. You can see the rivets here. And it was, we have two sheets that we just overlapped. So we had to buy two sheets yeah, for you, a six foot. You can see the, I mean I could have cut it, but I just made it easy and just overlapped them by two feet and put rivets um, along both seams. And because it's plastic I can easily um, clean it spray wash it uh, painted all the wood once it was dried out uh, just a, a white I just used a uh, like a kills uh, heavy primer paint so that it um, will just really reflect white uh, and, and and shine the light out um, so it'd be more visible ultimately to the insects and then this is just I I like to use 175 watt um, non self ballasting bulb for my uh, stationary black light setups like this or mercury vapor setups and I just have it hanging on a on a pipe um, with the, the thread you know screwed into the wood there and then on the back side in order to get power to this I didn't 
hire an electrician to actually like put in a, a formal outlet here. But what I did was I just took uh, an extension cord uh, and ran it through PVC conduit um, from an outlet, which we can show you up there, to here, it runs into here. And then I found this um, outlet housing uh, online. Um, it's great because it's weatherproof. It's under here, but it's just weatherproof. It can expand out and everything. And it, I put a GFCI outlet in there since it is gonna be out in the elements here. So that just uh, basically pops in like that. This is the ballast. What is this? Why is this? Oh, is that just to give room for the plug? Yeah, that's just to allow allow space for the plug because it wouldn't fit oh, otherwise. So it just expands out to allow different size plugs uh, to, to fit in there and then it gives it a weather seal. Okay, so why do you need a ballast? Because some folks will don't know that much about black lighting and they might want to know why you would need one. Right, so you can get uh, bulbs that have the ballast built in, but the ballast on fluorescent lights, these mercury vapor lights, regulates the current. So it gives it sufficient, the light sufficient voltage uh, to start. Um, so some fixtures, you'll have the ballast outside like this uh, in a box. Others, the ballast will be built in uh, to the light itself. Nothing wrong with either one. Um, I like the wavelength of light that the 175 watt non-self-ballasting bulb puts out. The self-ballasting mercury vapor bulbs puts out a slightly different wavelength of light. It doesn't, to my eye anyway, appear as um, much in the ultraviolet spectrum. Admittedly, I've never actually tested it, but uh, as this one. So that's why if I have access to a generator or AC power, I prefer the 175 watt uh, mercury vapor bulb. Some um, mercury vapor bulbs are self-ballasting and the ballast is in the bulb uh, and that's totally fine. I just have used this kind of setup for a long time and that's what I typically go with. Um, so in this case I have the ballast plugged into the to the electrical outlet and then the light bulb plugged into the ballast but if you don't have a ballast then you just plug the, the light uh, directly into the electrical supply of course. Yeah there's several um, lower wattage uh, mercury vapor light bulbs used for keeping like lizards and frogs and stuff like you that can, that you can buy now, right? That are self-ballasting. You can find some very expensive self-ballasting uh, bulbs, but you can find some exact same thing relatively cheaply if you just look in the pet trade. Uh, this is some PVC. This is conduit. Just conduit. Plant. It is PVC, but um, PVC electrical conduit. Uh, just it holds the, uh, the the cord, the, uh, the extension cord. So I and we buried it. If it's not obvious, then I just chopped off the female end of the extension cord and wired it into the the GFCI outlet uh, into this box. So it provides a, a power supply. Yeah. You could just simply plug this into the extension cord, but I just wanted something a little bit more weatherproofed and and uh alabama is really really wet like we get things that get wetter here in alabama than we do when we're in the tropics so it's insanely wet here so then the floor yeah the floor is probably the thing that i'm least happy with about this setup but basically all i did was just dug it out tried to you know level it as best i could and just put in cinder blocks um, for the flooring. It's worked out all right. Um, I, not, I like for it to be a little bigger, honestly, and of course things can get into the crevices, which is one of the reasons I'm not a, a big fan of it. Uh, but I also wasn't prepared to just have a, a um, you know, like a 10 foot by 10 foot uh, foundation of cement poured in a, back yeah. here that would be kind of permanent either. So, um, if somebody has some other great ideas to, to kind of fill in the gaps of something like this or just do it differently altogether, I would be curious about that. Yeah, leave it in the comments if you have any ideas on how to make this floor even better. Uh, it yeah. works though, I mean, I can easily... Historically, we had this whole cement area 
and the black light was between those two posts of the pergola and we just didn't basically use our yard furniture because <laughs> there wasn't anything to look at except for a white sheet that's all the entertainment you need that's right and, and actually another alternative to this if you want to be able to roll it up and down is um, we actually used a uh, uh, it was a blind, one of those plastic roll-up blinds that you often see, super cheap that you get at um, Lowe's. Yeah, Home it's Depot. just, uh, it's I think vinyl, um, thin kind of vinyl. You can get them in different um, widths, and they just, it's just uh, the old timey roll-up, roll-down. Roll um, yeah, it's not really a. I guess it is a blind. Yeah, yeah they're Roll-up blind, um, and uh, that worked great. Uh, so. You know, I could roll it up if uh, a storm was coming in or something like that. Which is the only time we ever rolled it up. <laughs> so here is the PVC coming back out from underground along our house. And then... So one of the things I did was I found this... Um, great outdoor uh, AC adapter that basically just has a remote on it. So this is just the extension cord plugged in. So this is my... Other half of the extension The other, yeah, it's the, the, the power line. Um, and it just plugs into this, which has um, got a remote uh, that's inside, so I can manually turn it on and off uh, as I wish. But it also has um, a sensor, a daylight sensor in it. So... Like I typically have it where it'll just come on at dusk automatically and then go off um, when the sun comes up. But I can also again manually turn it on and off, uh, you know, from inside with the remote. So this is a handy way to uh, to not have to worry about like if we're out late and I want the light on, then of course there's just a sensor on there that will turn it on. 